Section 8.3, Rational Functions and Their Graph. The objectives today are to identify properties of rational functions and to graph rational functions. Those are actually going to be on the video tomorrow, so we're just going to deal with the first one today. Rational functions are functions that can be written in the form f of x equals p of x over q of x, which basically means you can write it as a fraction. Um, with rational functions, p of x and q of x are polynomial functions like x squared plus 7 or x minus 1 or something like that. So here are some examples and um, we're also going to have to identify what those domains are as well. The domain of f of x is all real numbers except for those values um, where the denominator equals 0. So we're going to talk about that multiple times today. Here are some examples. Um, y equals x squared over x squared plus 1. So they have the graph shown. Um, Notice when you are looking at that denominator x squared plus 1, if you set that equal to 0, let me change colors quick. Um, if you solve, you get x squared equals negative 1. We can't take the square root of a negative 1, so here there are no numbers that are going to make it 0. Um, because if you plug in positive numbers, you get positive. If you plug in negative numbers, you get positive. And there's nothing um, in there that will make that one zero. So here, no values make that denominator zero because of that x squared item. Um, this is a continuous graph because when you look at it from left to right, you can drag your pencil all the way across and it doesn't leave the paper. The second one, y equals x plus 3, times x plus 2 over x plus 2. Um, when you look at that denominator and you set that equal to 0, x would equal negative 2. So that's the number that you can't have because it makes the denominator 0. So here you'd have all real numbers except values of x that equal negative 2. So if you're looking at that domain, that's what it would be. Here, if you drag your, your pencil from left to right, you drag it up to that hole, and then it skips a little bit. Um, you can't um, drag it through that hole because it's not included, and then it keeps on going after that. The third example, x plus 4 over x minus 2. Um, when you look at that denominator and set it equal to 0, you get x equals 2. So here the um, range would be um, values where x cannot equal 2. And also, there would be another one um, where y um, couldn't equal something, but we haven't talked about that yet. So a partial domain on this one. And actually, it isn't partial because it's only the x's anyway, so we'll call that the um, domain. It's discontinuous because there's a jump in the graph. So there's two parts of the graph, and it skips over a section in the middle. Um, but there's only that one number that it doesn't include. And again, the y-axis also has a skip in it. So that is a discontinuous graph. Um, here are some points of discontinuity. If a is a real number for which the denominator of the rational function f of x is 0, then a is not in the domain of f of x. The graph of f of x is not continuous at x equals a, and the function has a point of discontinuity at x equals a. So basically, is there a skip, a hole, a jump? Those spots are those points of discontinuity. Once you figure out that there is one, you have to decide, is it a removable discontinuity or a non-removable one? So here's um, two examples. We have the graph of x plus 3, x plus 2 over x plus 2. We looked at that one above. Um, this one has a removable discontinuity at x equals negative 2, um, and it's where the hole is. The hole in the graph is called a removable discontinuity because you could make the function continuous by reduce or redefining um, at x equals negative 2 um, so that it's one end. When we're looking at that, um, I'm just going to jot this off to the side. When you look at it, you get y equals x plus 3 times x plus 2 over x plus 2. If you simplify those out, that signifies the whole, and you have the function y equals x plus 3 left. So if you plug that point in now, you get negative 2 plus 3 
which is 1. Okay, so that's how they're redefining it. So anytime you have something that cancels in the numerator and denominator at the same time, that's a removable one because once you remove that and you plug the point back in, it is defined at that point. Um, a re non removable discontinuity is one like this one where you have x plus 4 over x minus 2. Um, it's, it's got a discontinuity at x equals 2, but you can't redefine it because there's nothing that cancels out. So the only redefined one is the um, where you have a hole. Um, when you're looking for discontinuities, factor the numerator and the denominator as a first step. The factors reveal those points of discontinuity. When you, if when you factor, one factor can be removed from the numerator and the denominator because they match, it is a removable discontinuity. So just remember that that's the removable one um, where it cancels on the top and the bottom. Okay, so what are the domain and points of discontinuity at each rational function? For B, are the points of discontinuity removable or non-removable? Remember, removable has a hole. And if it doesn't have a hole, then it's non-removable. And then we want to find the x and y intercepts as well. So first, let's do um, the factoring part. So let's factor the denominator. And we need factors of 3 that add up to negative 4. OK, so notice first that we do not have anything that will cancel out. So our step B is going to be non-removable. at x equals 3 and 1. So what you do is you solve each of those um, denominator parentheses, set them equal to 0, and you get 3 and 1. Um, for C, um, we're going to do that in a minute, but let's do A first. So we're going to have all real numbers except those places in the denominator that equal 0. So those are those same numbers that I talked about um, where they are a non-removable discontinuity. So um, all real numbers except x cannot equal 1 or 3. So basically, your domain elements are going to be determined by those discontinuity points. Now, how do you find the x and the y-intercepts? Um, for the x-intercept, set numerator equal to 0. For the y-intercept, um, substitute 0 in for x in the whole entire um, polynomial expression. So for the x-intercept, we're going to go x plus 3 equals 0. x would then equal negative 3. That's the x-intercept. And then um, the y-intercept, you substitute 0 in. So um, we get f of 0. We'll go y-intercept here. So you get 0 plus 3 over 0 minus 3, and then 0 minus 1, which gives us 3 over uh, negative 3 times negative 1. Uh, 3 over negative 3, which is negative 1. So your y-intercept on this one is, OK, it's positive 1 because you have two negatives. It would be positive 1. OK, so there's your, your three steps. Um, let's take a look at another one. So first of all, you cannot factor that denominator. Um, so my step B, um, I'm going to say none um, because there's no points in there that make that 0, um, which would make A all real numbers. So if there's no points you have to take out, it includes everything. And then the only thing we have to do on this one is find our x-intercept and our y-intercept. So the x-intercept, you're going to set that x part equal to 0, or the top part equal to 0, and you get x equals 5. And for your y-intercept, you're going to plug a 0 in for the x's, so f of 0 would be 0 minus 5 over 0 plus 1 which gives us negative 5. So here our x-intercept is 5, and our y-intercept is negative 5. 
and let's do one more. So let's factor. The numerator would be factors of negative 4 that add up to negative 3. So x minus 4 and x plus 1. And that would be over x minus 4. Now notice how those two can cancel each other out. That means this is a whole. And anytime there's a whole for that b part, you're going to have a removable discontinuity at x equals 4. And that also tells us that our domain is all real numbers except at x equals 4. So you can't include um, those. So part A, re, um, all real numbers except for 4. You have a removable discontinuity at x equals 4. And now you have to find your x-intercept and your y-intercepts x-intercept you're going to set um, and of course that makes this a new function of x plus 1 so when you actually try to find your x-intercept you can't leave that hole in there so you do you go to that reduced version so you're gonna set that part equal to 0 so x can't x is going to be equal to negative 1 and then for the y-intercept um, you're using the original function and setting um, x equal to 0. So 0 minus 4 times 0 plus 1 over 0 minus 4. So you get a negative 4 times 1 which is negative 4 and you get a negative 4 in the denominator which is 1 and also if you look at that and you plug a 0 into that original function 0 plus 1 would be 1. Um, so um, that is what you are looking at for that one. Um, you can pause this video and practice your got it questions if you'd like. We're looking to do the exact same thing we just did. Okay, so factor 1 over x minus 4 x plus 4. Um, so our domain is all real numbers except for those that make the denominator 0 which are 4 and negative 4. Now if you have things that make that denominator 0 those are discontinuity nothing cancels so these are non removable discontinuity points at 4 and negative 4. Now we're looking for the x-intercept. Um, with that one you set the um, x part equal to 0. Um, we can't set 1 equal to 0 so there are none. And then for the y-intercept remember we plug 0 in for the x's. Um, so we have a 1 over 0 minus 4, 0 plus 4, which would be 1 over negative 4 times 4 would be negative 16. So you have a negative 1 16th for that y-intercept. For the second one, um, I'm going to factor. I get x minus 1, x plus 1. Uh, the denominator cannot be factored. Um, here there are no discontinuities for part b. Um, let's write that better. Um, which also means that you can include all real numbers for the um, domain. The x-intercept, we're going to set that numerator equal to 0, so you get x equals 1 and negative 1. And for the, or the y-intercepts, we're going to plug 0 in for those x's. So we get 0 minus 1 would be negative 1. 0 plus 1 would be 1. We're going to multiply those. And then 0 squared is 0 plus 3 if you plug it in the denominator. So you get negative 1 over 3. So the only y-intercept there is a fraction, and that's OK. And then the last one, we're going to factor that denominator. So you get x plus 2, x plus 1. Uh, notice that those cancel out. We have a whole, so we have a removable discontinuity at um, oops 
um, x equals negative 1. That's the number that you cannot have in the range, or the um, domain, sorry. So we have the all real numbers except for negative 1. Um, also, we have to include negative 2 there. Um, we also have a um, non-removable discontinuity at um, x equals negative 2. So there can be a combination of things there. Um, our new function is 1 over x plus 2. So when you plug a, oops, if you set 1 equal to 0, that can't happen. So there are no x-intercepts. And for the y-intercept, if you set a um, x equal to 0, you have 1 over 0 plus 2, and you get 1 half. Okay, so no x-intercepts and 1 half for the y-intercept. Now going on to vertical asymptotes, those are those dotted lines and it would be the one that's going vertical through the x-axis. The graph has vertical asymptotes at each real zero of the denominator if p of x and q of x have no common zeros. Um, if p of x and q of x have x minus a to the m and x minus a to the n as factors and m is less than n, um, then it has a vertical asymptote at x equals a. So um, let's take this a little further here. What are the vertical asymptotes here? There's nothing that cancels out. So what we're going to do is we're going to put vertical asymptotes at those denominator items. x minus 2 equals 0 would be x equals 2. And x minus 3 equals 0 would be x equals 3. So you have two vertical asymptotes at x equals 2 and x equals 3. Um, let's do a few more. Here's some got it questions you can pause if you'd like. Um, so for the first one, uh, nothing cancels out, so we're only strictly looking at the denominator values. Um, x minus 1 equals 0 gives us x equals 1. Um, x plus 3 equals 0 gives us x equals negative 3. So there are two um, vertical asymptotes here. Make sure you label vertical asymptotes and give the x equals part. Um, when you are labeling these. Um, here on the next one, we have two items that cancel out. Um, so that would be a whole. The rest of the items that are left determine that vertical asymptote. So x plus 3 equals 0 gives us a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 3. So it cannot be a whole and a vertical asymptote at the same time. It can only be one of those. So make a little mental note of that. On the last one, if we factor the numerator, we get x minus 1, x plus 1. Oops, there's a 1 in there. And then an x plus 1 in the denominator. Those cancel, so we have a whole um, at x equals negative 1. And then there's nothing left in the denominator, so this one does not have 1. So they don't have to have vertical asymptotes, but most of them do. Now. That's how you find vertical asymptotes is um, figure out those zeros that you can't have. Um, a graph can have numerous vertical asymptotes, but it can only have one horizontal asymptote. So keep that in mind, um, only one horizontal. Um, how do we find those? We compare the degree of the numerator to that of the denominator. If the numerator is less than the denominator, the um, horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. If the numerator is bigger than the denominator, like you could divide it using long division, then there isn't one. If they are equal, um, then it's whatever that um, degree in the numerator, the highest one is, to the um, highest degree in the denominator. So let's check these three out. Um, so for... Um, I have my pages mixed up in my notes here. Let me get to this one. Okay, so when we look at the degree, um, the things we're looking at are the highest degrees. So notice how we have a 2x over an x, and I'm ignoring everything else. Um, 
those are the same degree so we're going to put whatever that is we're going to put a 2 over 1 so you're looking at y equals 2 so you take those degrees basically stack them on top of each other and that's your horizontal asymptote um, here you'll want to factor this one first we get an x minus 3 and an x plus 1 nothing cancels so um, there we don't have to worry about that but when you look at the degree we have x on the top and x squared on the bottom notice how an x is a first degree and an x squared is a second degree so if the numerator is smaller than the denominator um, then it is y equals 0 okay um, let's look at this one if we factor it um, we get x minus 3 x plus 1 on the top nothing cancels um, we're looking at the degrees we have an x squared on the top and an x on the bottom that would be a 2 this would be a 1 um, you're just looking at the exponents there so we have the numerator is bigger than the denominator um, then there aren't any so there are no um, horizontal asymptotes here so there can only be one um, or none you can get a reasonable graph for a rational function by finding all the intercepts and the asymptotes sometimes you'll also have to plot a few extra points to get a good sense of the shape so um, tomorrow we're going to get into the problem four where we're actually doing the graphing parts of it